Shalom, all praises, blessings, glories, and honors to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Racha Kodash. Double honors to my elder apostles and bishop elders of Great Millstone, who have taught me this truth, as well of men of like mind. Shalom wa chasad, which means peace and mercy, to the elect of the nation of Israel. Whom are you so called Negroes, Latinos, Native American Indians, and Israelite foreigners of the Asylum of our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, whom are scattered here in America, which is Babylon the Great, and abroad. To you I say Shalom and Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai Rataza. This lesson is edifying and informative. Ezekiel chapter 7, verse 25. Destruction cometh, and they shall seek peace, and there shall be none. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 3. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Ezekiel chapter 7, verse 26. Mischief shall come upon mischief, and rumor shall be upon rumor. Then shall they seek a vision of the prophet. But the law shall perish from the priest and counsel from the ancients. In the news from the RT, various articles. U.S. may become net exporter of crude oil. Hungary wants European Parliament dissolved. Russia and India will ditch dollar and euro in trade. Russian Foreign Ministry. Donald Trump Jr. calls Zelensky welfare queen. Ukraine threatens more explosions in Russia. NATO boss to lead IMF media. Fewer Americans identify with religion than ever. Polls. U.S. lawmaker slams. Egregious 1.7 trillion spending bill. Corruption scandal hurts EU credibility. European Council President. Russia is fighting West in Ukraine. Shogu. Don't get too drunk, NHS tells Brits. Increased death rate among U.S. police officers explained. Russia begins deployment of new state-of-the-art SARMAT ICBM. Defense Ministry announces major expansion of Russian army. EU regulator issues warning on gas price cap. Putin provides details on Russia's hypersonic missiles. Germany denies plans to buy Russian oil. Russia will continue to modernize nuclear arsenals. Ukraine to ask U.S. for long-range missiles. Russia becomes top crude supplier to China. So notice that there are many headlines concerning war. Russia will continue to modernize nuclear arsenal, Putin. 
The strategic forces are the key safeguard of the country's sovereignty, the president said. Russia's nuclear arsenal is the key guarantor of its sovereignty, President Vladimir Putin said on Wednesday, pledging that new weapons could soon enter into service. This is, of course, through Russia taking its economic wealth and using it towards the research, development, and enhancements of weapons of mass destruction. And this is a part of biblical prophecy. Joel chapter 3, verse 9. Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Prepare war. Prepare for what war? Revelation chapter 11, verse 14. The second woe is past. So World War II has already passed. And behold, the third woe, World War III, cometh quickly. And this is the war that the Gentiles are preparing for. For we are in the season of war according to the book of Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, the eighth verse. And this war will be fought with burning and fuel of fire. According to Isaiah chapter 9, verse 5. For every battle of the warrior is a confused noise and garments rolled in blood. So the wars that were fought in antiquity were fought with men warring against each other with swords and spears and staves, arrows and bows, lances, thrusting each other through, lacerating each other, cutting each other's heads, arms, legs off, even with shields. But this, that is the third world's war, which cometh quickly according to Revelation chapter 11 verse 14 in which the Gentiles are preparing for shall be with burning and fuel of fire. Why? Because a fire not blown according to Job the 20th chapter will consume the kingdom of the wicked because you see a fire typically requires air, oxygen, and fuel. And this is known as a fire triangle. But this war, that is the third world's war, will be fought with nuclear fire. Fire that is generated through the chain reactions of fusion and fission. Hence, the reason why it is considered a fire not blown through general means of using air, oxygen, and fuel via a fire triangle. And so this is what the Gentiles are preparing for. They are preparing for the third world's woe, which cometh quickly. Hence, the reason why they've been beating their plashes into swords and they're pruning hooks into spears, which is to say that they've been taking their economic wealth and using them towards research, development, and enhancements of weapons of mass destruction, and particularly for ICBM nuclear missiles, which according to Jeremiah chapter 50 verse 25 are the weapons of the Lord's indignation. All these things are a part of biblical prophecy, brothers and sisters, and we are living in the times of prophecy. Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles, prepare war, wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near, draw near where? Near the valley of Jehoshaphat, which in the Hebrew is Yahweh Shapat, which means 
Yahweh's judgment. And it is located in the Arabian Peninsula in the Middle East. That is where the mighty men, that is where all the men of war will draw near to. Let them come up. This is why the Lord has dried up the river Euphrates according to the biblical prophecy in the book of Revelation. So that the way may be prepared for the kings of the east. And who dwells in the east? Gog and Magog, which is Russia. In the book of Isaiah, they're known as the Medes. In the book of Ezekiel, they're known as Gog and Magog, which means mountains and of the mountains. Which is referring to Russia. Okay, and they will become a guard unto Persia, Iran. Because Iran will be attacked by the least of the flock, who is the state of Israel. That will initiate the third world's woe and cause America to become a guard unto itself, thus causing Russia to become a guard unto Iran. Kickstarting a war between the two superpowers and their allies. And then America's allies will turn against America. We've been seeing that slowly happen. And that's also part of biblical prophecy in the book of Revelation, the 17th chapter. The beast shall hate the whore. And they're going to eat her flesh and burn her with fire. All the men of our confederacy have deceived her. The time is coming. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruner hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. And weak nations like North Korea have been saying that they are now strong because now they possess ICBM nuclear missiles. So, a lot of interesting things have been happening as of lately concerning biblical prophecy. And all praises, all blessings, all glories, and all honors to Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai Because the more the, 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 the Lord Yahweh through his son Yahweh Shai are moving very swiftly. So reading on in this article, President Vladimir Putin said on Wednesday pledging that new weapons could soon enter into service. Putin made the statement in a speech during a meeting with the country's senior defense officials. The nuclear triad comprises missiles fired from aircraft, submarines, and ground-based mobile launchers and silos. We will continue to maintain and improve the combat readiness of our nuclear triad. This is the main guarantee for preserving our sovereignty and territorial integrity, strategic parity, and the general balance of power in the world, Putin said. The president added that the share of modern types of weapons in Russia's strategic nuclear forces has exceeded 91% this year. Putin stated that the Sarmat silo-based intercontinental ballistic missile will enter service in the nearest future, hence the reason why they've been testing it out. The missile can travel 18,000 kilometers, about 11,184 miles. Putin also said that the Northern Fleets, Frigate Admiral Gorshokov, will be equipped with Zorakhan hypersonic anti-ship missiles in early January. Launched in 2010, the Frigate is among Russia's largest ships. Testing of the Zorkan abroad, the Admiral Gorshkov was completed in June, according to the Defense Ministry. Defense Ministry Sergei Shagu said at the same meeting that the first Tu-160M, the upgraded version of the Tu-160 nuclear-capable bomber, has joined the Air Force. Western and Ukrainian officials have accused Putin of making nuclear threats after he vowed to use all means at our disposal to defend Russia. When the Russia's official nuclear doctrine, which has 
which excuse me was revised in 2020 moscow would use atomic weapons in response to any attack to an attack excuse me with weapons of mass destruction or when there was a threat to the existence of the state as a whole putin reiterated this month that moscow would only use nuclear weapons in response to an attack this concludes the article Putin provides details on Russia's hypersonic missiles. The first warship fitted with new Zarakhan weaponry is set to begin routine services, or service rather, excuse me, early next year, the Russian president has said. And we just briefly read about this in the prior article. The first naval vessel fitted with Zarakhan hypersonic cruise missiles is set to begin its routine combat duty early in January, Russian President Vladimir Putin has revealed. The President made the remarks on Wednesday during a meeting with the country's top defense officials. In early January next year, the Admiral Gorshkov frigate will enter combat service with the latest. I repeat once again, not having any analogs in the world, C launched Zarakhan hypersonic missile systems, Putin stated. At the meeting, Defense Ministry Sergei Shogu also announced that silo based Sarmat ICBMs are already being deployed into Russia's strategic missile forces. The new hypersonic missiles, officially known as the ZM 22 Zarakhan, have been actively tested over the past years. <laughs> After first being announced by Putin back in 2019, the Admiral Korshkov, a modern missile frigate with Russia's northern fleet, has already performed multiple test launches of the new missiles. Still little is known about the weapon, which is heavily shrouded in secrecy. The projectiles are reportedly able to reach speeds of at least Mach 9, just over 11,000 kilomiles per hour, which is pretty damn fast, while retaining the ability to maneuver, making them effectively impossible to intercept. The projectiles can cover a distance of at least 1,500 kilometers, 932 miles. Igor Kork Kamal, commander of the Admiral Gorshkov, revealed earlier this year. The new missiles repeatedly fit into the standard launch tubes of Russia's naval vessels, which are equipped with older missiles such as the cruise, culber, or anti-ship onyx missiles. This compatibility potentially allows any Russian cruise missile carrying vessel to be fitted with the Zorakon. Apart from service ships, the new missiles are expected to be fitted on certain cruise missile capable submarines after the first submarine test launch of the Zarakhan performed by the nuclear-powered Severe Rodvinsk late in 2021. This concludes the article. No evidence rushes behind Nord Stream blasts. Defense Ministry announces major expansion of Russian army. Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shogu attends an expanded meeting of the Russian Defense Ministry Board at the National Defense Control Center in Moscow. He says the nation's military should amount to 1.5 million servicemen. Russian Defense Ministry Sergei Shogu has announced the need to make a number of structural cha changes to the country's armed forces in light of NATO's attempt to bolster its presence on Russia's border and expand its membership in Finland and Sweden. During a Russian Defense Ministry meeting on Wednesday, Shogu proposed a number of measures to strengthen the security of the Russian Federation, including creating a special grouping of troops on the country's northwestern border and expanding Russia's army, excuse me, armed forces to amount to 1.5 million servicemen in total, with some 6 
195,000 of them being contract soldiers. Shogu's comments come as Helsinki and Stockholm have submitted bids to join NATO, citing a perceived threat from Russia in light of its ongoing military operation in Ukraine. Their accession to the U.S.-led bloc is currently stalled by Turkey and Hungary, but all other members have already welcomed their membership. The minister also offered to gradually change the minimum draft age in Russia from 18 to 21 and raise the maximum age to 30, while also offering all draftees the opportunity to sign a contract with the army from the first day of service. Shogu went on to suggest creating a number of new military groupings, including five new artillery divisions, eight bomber aviation regimes, and one fighter regime, as well as six army aviation brigades. Russian President Vladimir Putin, who also attended the meeting, approved the proposals for improving the country's armed forces and instructed Shogu to report back once these measures are deliberated with the ministerial board. Putin promised to address these proposals in detail later. During his address to senior defense officials, Putin also emphasized the need to continue to modernize Russia's nuclear arsenal describing it as the key to guaranteeing the country's sovereignty. This concludes the article. Russia begins deployment of new state-of-the-art Sarmat ICBM. The new model has already been successfully tested and will enter service next year, Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu has said. Russia's first new silo-based Sarmat intercontinental ballistic missile will be deployed into service next year, Defense Minister Sergei Shogu has said at a meeting at Russia's senior defense officials with President Vladimir Putin on Wednesday. Successful launches of the new heavy Sarmat missile system during state-run tests made it possible to begin work on its deployment, Shogu said. In total, some 22 new strategic nuclear missile launchers, including the silo-based SARMAT as well as the Avangard and Yar systems, are set to be deployed to the country's strategic missile forces SMF next year, the minister revealed. Putin said that efforts would continue to improve the country's SMF, adding that the share of modern types of weapons in Russia's strategic nuclear forces has exceeded 91% this year. We will continue to maintain and improve the combat readiness of our nuclear triad. This is the main guarantee for preserving our sovereignty and territorial integrity, strategic parity, and the general balance of power in the world, he stated, even as stated in the previous articles. The liquid fueled heavy ICBM was first successfully test launched back in April. The new system is ultimately set to replace the aging silo-based R-36M2 Volvodan missiles, the backbone of Russia's strategic nuclear deterrence. Speaking with Krasnaya Zevda Red Star, the official newspaper of the Russian military, the head of Russia's SMF, General Sergei Kara. Kaiv said the new missile boasts vastly large capabilities than its predecessor. The missile system Sarmat has a wide range of capabilities for deploying various types of combat payloads and is based on principles that assure guarantee penetration of any anti-ballistic missile ABM system. What should that remind us of? Joe, the second chapter, they, not, they shall not break their ranks. Neither shall any of them be wounded, if the paraphrase in the scripture. Both now and in the future, Karakov told the newspaper last week, this includes your article. So, a lot of headlines of war, the rumors of wars, 
Russia is fighting West and Ukraine, right? So they've been fighting a proxy war in Ukraine between themselves and the U.S. Fewer Americans identify with religious religion, excuse me, than ever. So fewer Americans identify themselves basically as atheists. An atheist is somebody that does not believe that there is a higher power. And the scripture says that a fool has said in his heart that there is no God. And the only God is Yahweh and his only begotten and beloved son or Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. There is no other God besides them. <laughs> okay. Church attendance and belief in God are at historic lows in the U.S. survey show. Few Americans are attending church. And by the way, the word church is from the Latin ecclesia, which means to call out. And the Lord calls out unto who? Unto the elect of the nation of Israel. And to be more specific, unto the elect men of the nation of Israel. For as it is written, unto you, O men, I call, and my voice is unto the sons of men. Of who? Of the nation of Israel. Okay, so again, the word church is from the, is from the Latin ecclesia, which means to call out or outcall than ever according to report excuse me recent polls the survey is referred to in several u.s media reports on wednesday show that a combination of pandemic lockdowns and generational shifts in attitudes because america has basically demoralized mentally and spiritually the minds of of people their attitudes are demoralizing Okay, everything about people in this country, as far as their morality goes, is, is very poor. Etiquette is lost. Okay, no integrity, nothing. The once solidly Christian nation question, and this was never a solid Christian nation, man. Now you do have a lot of zealous uh, Israelites that may appear to be Edomites in the Bible Belt. Midwest and places like that. But guess what? <laughs> they have a zero not according to knowledge, you know. It says, questioning its re relationship with organized religion. More than four in five Americans, 81%, believe in God, according to a Gallup poll conducted earlier this year. While that's still a sizable majority, it's also the lowest percentage since the poll pollster began asking the question back in 1944, when 98% of Americans espouse belief. Similarly, the number of Americans who belong to a church, mosque, or synagogue is at an all-time low, comprising a minority of the population 47% for the first time last year, according to Gallup. Driven by a rise in those claiming no religious affiliation, a group has rivaled Catholics or evangelical Christians in size since before the C-19 pandemic, the decline is likely to continue, the pastor suggests. Changing social attitudes are, aren't so solely responsible, however. Church attendance plunged 45% from 2022 to February 2020. Excuse me, I'm, I know I'm reading you know, fast. I'm trying to go through this article. It says... Church attendance plunged 45% from 2020 to February 2022, according to an analysis by the ABC News, as most state governments shut down in-person gatherings for C-19. While some churches attempted to hold virtual services or even had the faithful assemble in their parked cars outside, their numbers haven't quite recovered. Only about 1 in 5, 22%, Protestant pastors told LifeAway that attendance at their services was close to the January 2020 numbers. While younger people are more likely to identify as non-religious than their elders, Americans with a college education are more likely to be members of a church, synagogue, or mosque, according to research conducted last year by the Survey Center on American Life. This is part of a general trend towards social isolation among the less educated who the pastor found have fewer close friends, less social support, and are less likely to be married. 
Not all religious groups have seen their numbers decline recently. However, so-called non-denominational churches, Protestants who don't belong to established groups such as the Methodists or Southern Baptists, have grown by 9,000 in the last decade, according to the U.S. Religious Census, and their adherents now number a respective five and six times as much, excuse me, as many as belong to the Presbyterian and S. Copalian churches. This concludes the article. So, the main articles have been read. So, I'm just going to read the headlines of these other articles and then you finish off reading the scriptures and then conclude the lesson. Lord's willing. Russia and India will ditch dollar in urine trade. Hungary wants European Parliament dissolved. U.S. may become net exporter of crude oil. Okay, so again, these nations are preparing for the third world as well. Assemble yourselves and come all ye heat in Joel chapter 3 verse 11 and gather yourselves together round about where the valley of Jehoshaphat to the cause and mighty ones who are the angels to come down, O Yahweh. Let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat for there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. Refer to Second Nessus, the 13th chapter. Okay. Put you in the sickle for the harvest is ripe. Come, get you down for the press is full. The fast overflow for their wickedness is great. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. For the day of the Lord Yahweh is near in the valley of decision. So, you know, the Lord is going to bring judgment upon the heathen nations very soon in the valley of decision. The sun and the moon shall would, shall be darkened and the stars shall shall withdraw their shining. And that's going to happen literally when the Lord causes those ICBM nuclear missiles to detonate. But prior to that, the Lord is going to cut off all access to his knowledge. Okay? And there will be a famine of the word. <clears throat> because metaphorically, the sun is likened unto wisdom and the moon understanding. And all those things will soon be darkened by reason of the Lord darkening those things. Okay, on the spiritual level, but then it will happen physically when the Lord causes those nuclear missiles, those warheads to detonate. Okay, in this land, completely obliterating it, and also certain parts of the world. Okay, and there will be radiation, the wormwood. Okay, now let's go back to Ezekiel chapter 5. Excuse me, 7, verse 25 and 26. And then read that and then conclude the lesson. Lord is willing. Ezekiel chapter 7, verse 25. Destruction cometh and they shall seek peace and there shall be none. So when destruction comes in the form of the four kinds that the Lord will appoint over the world, the sinners of his people, two-thirds, according to Jeremiah chapter 15, verse uh, 4, as well as all the plagues, they're going to attempt to seek peace, but there shall be none. Mischief shall come upon mischief, and rumor shall be upon rumor. Then shall they seek a vision of the prophet, but the law shall perish from the priests and counsel from the ancients. So, they're false prophets, they're uh, TD fakes, Creflo Give Me, Odala, Joyce Myers, Joel Osteen, all these different false prophets they look up to, Farrakhan, Al Sharpton, they won't have the answers. Okay, they won't have the answers and many will despair and die according, according to prophecy. So with that, I'll conclude this lesson. I know it was pretty lengthy. Lord, only you, uh, you got to this point and you were edified and informed. Until the next Lord's when I say shalom to the elect.